Yeah, well, I'll tell you where there's a lot of money and resources. Saudi Arabia, that's where there is. And we're going to talk about that right now because the Saudi transfer window officially uh, shut last night with the club spending over 700 million pounds this summer. We touched on it um, in the last episode where it's just been a busy transfer window where we saw names like Neymar, like Benzema, like, you know, Mane, just names that we never thought uh, would go there all, especially in, in one summer. And now it has everybody wondering if the other European leagues that, you know, we're used to um, should be worried about the Saudi Pro League. Well, a certain Neymar seems to think so. Cara, eu te garanto que o futebol é o mesmo. A bola é redonda, tem gol. <risos> e acho que pelos nomes que foram né, para a Liga Saudita hoje... Olha, não sei não se não é melhor que o Campeonato Francês. <risos> mas... Mas... Acho que a minha cabeça tem que estar boa. Eu tenho que estar feliz, eu tenho que estar me sentindo bem. É, eu sei me cuidar, eu sei o que é preciso fazer para um atleta estar em condições de jogo. É, vivo isso há 15 anos. E, bom, acho que não, não, tem, muito, não tem muito segredo. Né? O treinamento lá é, é intenso. É, a sede de, de vencer, de ganhar, a minha e dos meus companheiros são grandes. Quero sim conquistar títulos com o e Então, acho que não muda muito a minha cabeça. Neymar, they're not uh, holding back his little pokes there to the league. Oh, where he's recently left. Rob, let me go to you on this one, because like I said, we did touch on it um, on the last uh, ESPN FC Live. Your thoughts on on this whole thing. Um, does it leave a bad taste in your mouth? Should leagues, our European leagues, be a bit more worried? Probably. I mean, not straight away, but people might forget that that's exactly how the Premier League grew in the, in the mid nineties that they began by offering very, very high salaries to aging foreign players like Marcel Desailly and, and Ravinelli, who came to the Premier League. The investment continued and gradually they signed, the clubs signed better and better players and, and all the way through the league, you know, the, the reason why people love the Premier League is, is because of the, the TV money is, is distributed like it is. And um, it's very competitive and, um, and even the, the mid table or the smaller clubs can can spend big fees and and um, and build up very competitive squads. So, yeah, I mean, if, if the investment in Saudi Arabia is going to continue after this summer, which I don't doubt that it will do, um, then why not? Why not in ten years or or twenty years? Why would Saudi Arabia, if they can continue to sign these level of players, why would it not compete with with Europe's top five leagues? I think the, the only thing that, that maybe Europe has that, that Saudi Arabia possibly will never have is, is the Champions League and, and players, the best players in the world at the moment still want to play in the Champions League. And so, um, you know, the, there is a draw to the best Premier League clubs or Bundesliga clubs or, or the biggest clubs in Europe that maybe the, the Saudi Arabia clubs don't have. But um, if, if you've got an, an indefinite amount of money and you can attract players like Neymar and Benzema and Ronaldo then eventually you'll be able to start attracting players not who are 35, but who are 25. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure your European clubs, the biggest European clubs aren't looking at it right now and going, oh, we're really worried. You know, They're going to take over anytime soon. That's not the case. But if this was to continue for 20 years, then, yeah, of course, why not? You know, they, they certainly could challenge the, the, the biggest Premier League clubs. Would it change then, um, Augie and I were discussing this in the last episode as well, but would it change then if the Saudi Pro League eventually, which we feel it's getting there, managed to land a name like Mo Salah, who is still, you know, one of the best players in the world right now? I mean, I don't think it would be any one individual. What what would tip the balance is if they, if, if middling, you know, mid-20s players began to pick Al Nasser over... Man United, you know, you'd say there was a situation this summer where United were desperate to sign Mason Mount, but also Al Nasser were desperate to sign him. And Al Nasser could offer a bigger salary. And in the end, Mason Mount, who is, you know, early 20s, an England international, turned down Man United to go to Al Nasser. Not, one deal on its own wouldn't do that. But if that became the norm, then that would be a sign that the balance was tipping. And, and actually, the, the deal... The Saudi deal that caught my attention most out of everything this summer was Ruben Neves leaving Wolves mm. um, for Saudi Arabia because 
that's a player who's been linked with every big club in, in Europe. He was linked with Barcelona. He was linked with Man United at one point. You know, there was there was at one stage, maybe not this summer, but at one stage, an awful lot of interest in Neves. And he's a Portuguese international at the, the, the height of his career, and he's chosen to go to Saudi Arabia. Now, again, one deal on its own is not going to tip the balance. But if that was to continue to happen for 20 years, 15, 20 years, then you would see that the Saudi Pro League was able to compete with the Premier League or Serie A or the Bundesliga. That's just the nature of how, how leagues develop. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.